I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Welcome to Conversatio, the show that brings those topics that will help you live a better life. Hi, I'm your host, Prince Lee, and today's show is titled Human Resources, A Woman for President in 2016. To help us with this matter is our guest, special guest today, Ms. Sharon Baldwin, who is the owner of Total Residuals. We'll let our guests, how are you today? Very well, thank you. Explain to you a little bit about what Total Residuals does. Okay, thanks Prince. Um, Total Residuals is um, a professional networking association. Uh, It's also going to be an educational transition center as well as an outplacement center. I, when I first met you and first learned of, I know that you were a businesswoman, and I learned of that your major experience was in human resources. And you know, we all have our conception of what something is, and I'm thinking about human resources was always this kind of like glorified personnel function, just add a little to the personnel department, that's human relations, human resources, I'm sorry. Uh, but in speaking to you, I got a better appreciation for human resources, especially now with the downsizing. Despite the budget, is there ever a time that we, a corporation can afford to not be involved with that process? Well, I think that uh, corporations are always looking um, at the bottom line. Um, They're always looking for um, a way to certainly stay in business and to make a profit. Um, That said, uh, part of that is looking at your staff counts, your staff levels, uh, to ensure that you have the right people in the right jobs at the right time. Um, You have the right amount of people. Um, At times, what happens is um, there are redundancies within an organization, so therefore, um, you know, evaluations are done, assessments are done, um, and then organizations have to right size, um, you know, their their companies. So um, that's why we're we're at the state that we are. Or if they're struggling financially, uh, one of the one of the things for a cost cutting initiative is that they will have to cut staff. Unfortunately, for our audience, right size is. Right size means that you have the right number of people to get the job done. You don't have an excess or an overflow of people. Well, perhaps you should explain to the Republican Party about the right size and there was this problem about the size of government, you know, and at the risk of you know cutting back, you know, some of the human services that are very much needed. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that at times um, much needed programs have to go away, Prince. Um, I, I'd like to think that people uh, think very carefully about, um, you know, getting rid of programs before they actually do it. Uh, but sometimes, um, you know, they've cut so deep and they're at a point where they have to continue to make decisions as to whether a program stays or a program has to go. Um, and unfortunately, that's that's where a lot of companies are finding themselves in this economic um, state that we're in now. Well, if we were to consider government staffing, okay, mm-hmm. and if we were con- to consider that the head executive mm-hmm. of government, so to speak, is the president, do you think that 
human resource or the, the ability to be to be very sharp in that area is a qualification for someone running for the presidency? Um, I think that um, somebody who has the right views, no matter what discipline um, they come from, um, somebody who's able to communicate that out to the public, somebody who is people-centric, because after all, that's what the government is here to do. It's here to serve the people. Um, I think that um, you know, with the right educational level, with the right experience, um, I think that um, you know anyone could throw their their name in the hat for that position. Well, let's go back to you know the title of our show. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that a woman inertly brings more human resource understanding into the position? Uh, or or a, a candidacy for president? I absolutely... Are they more people persons? I, I absolutely think that the country is moving towards a woman president. Um, I think that President Obama is doing a great job um, giving the state in which he stepped into the presidency. Um, however, um, there are a lot of challenges that really need um, to be thought through carefully. Um, there needs to be some nurturing, um, and, and that's where I believe that women do a better job in that arena. As the role of mother, the role of caregiver, um, it's just innate that, that we have that, in a, that ability to do that. To somehow nurse the public. <laughs> That's, that's an excellent thought and concept. Um, if at any time I sound a little chauvinistic, just correct me, no problem. I, I certainly will. I, I figured that you would. Uh, let's go back to your business, your organization. Yes. And the title of it is uh, Total Residuals. Yes. Okay. And... To me, re residual suggests that something that's left over and or maybe forgotten mm -hmm. from the regular process. The regular process produces a certain thing, and then there, here are some things that are left out. Mm -hmm. Is that part of what you're saying so far as, uh, we'll say, the personnel uh, 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 factor with different companies? Are they generally leaving out in its total residuals I mean like it's even a little more than what's normally thought about being done um, absolutely not it, it's actually uh, the opposite total residual represents um, the total person the total packet package excuse me um, our being our own brand um, when you are in transition, when you have been downsized, um, it is your responsibility as the person in transition to represent yourself. Um, you're looking for a job. Um, in that process, there's a lot of different steps that you have to go through. There's a lot of different emotions uh, that go along with losing your job. Um, there's anger, there's frustration, there's fear. Uh, there could be um, sadness, depression, anxiety, things of that nature. Um, for my business, Total represents the, the entire uh, package, kind of a one-stop shopping. Um, in that, people can come to Total Residuals, they can actually get um, retraining, um, they can get help and assistance with their resumes, their cover letters, um, their thank you letters, um, they can participate in workshops um, that will provide them with job readiness skills so that they're able to go out and call on corporate people um, for their next opportunity. Um, in fact, we're going to have um, a recruiting firm that's right in our facility that's going to help people with job leads and career transition and things of that nature. One of the arms that, that Total Residuals will offer is a retraining center. Um, in that, there will be programs such as diesel mechanic, um, HVAC, um, uh, commercial driver's license program, um, a customer service program, a fashion program. Um, if people want to start their own business, there's going to be an entrepreneurial program as well. When you mention 
training. Yes. Okay. It's good to see that we're also talking about jobs, jobs, jobs mm -hmm. in regards to this you know, program uh, because obviously it's needed and it would be the type of thing that would be nice to have on some resume mm -hmm. if you were to run for an office, which do you have any intentions of running for public office? <laughs> Interesting. Um, yes, I do. Um, I have at interest, the presidential level. Um, not initially, obviously. Uh -huh. um, I believe in starting um, at a baseline level and learning and growing and developing. Um, I'm certainly interested in running for local office um, here in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, where I will soon reside. Um, I'm currently in East Hartford, uh, but I am moving to, to Hartford, um, and that's where my business will be as well. well so look out, Mayor Cigar. <laughs> that's a thought. Uh, you mentioned training. Uh, training, and I guess also hand in hand with that is development. How would you think that the mechanics for developing a group of women who would qualify for a candidacy for president in 2016, I'm sorry. Um, I think how that- is it, how, would they, how, are they gonna, how are we gonna develop these people? I, I think that through, obviously, formal education. Um, I think that through life experiences. Um, I think that, um, a professional woman's network. Um, there, there are many out there. Um, that's something that I believe strongly that is really needed um, for people to come together, um, to learn together, to network together, um, to have a forum and a place where we as women can feel safe and talk about uh, the issues that are important to us, that are important to our children, that are important to our communities, our churches, uh, things of that nature, um, and I plan to create um, a forum, uh, a forum such as that. A forum such as that. Mm -hmm. Would that forum be some sort of social network or networking effort? Um, that would be an arm of that it. That would be an arm of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right, right. um, you know, everyone is connected today. Um, social media has a lot of advantages. Um, it has a lot of disadvantages as well, but it all depends on the user and how we choose to use social media and use it responsibly. Well, so there's a, a need for social media to address training or to address training of rights and civic responsibilities. So if we did have this woman for president in 2016 that social media might help her develop X amount of skills. I, I think so. I think it's a way to get information out. It's a vehicle where you can reach a broader audience. Um, I think things like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter um, are excellent vehicles to have your voice be heard and again to reach a much broader audience. Are you familiar with the concept of a social compact? Um, I am not. You are not? No. Okay. Well, I believe it's an organization uh, that is trying to develop the infrastructure for these types of tools as far as training our children and others about their civic responsibilities and providing the type of tools, shall we say. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs tools to fulfill their wishes and all. And it's very interesting because I was trying to outline uh, the steps that you go through for any particular project. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, first you need to you know, organize, register, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. okay. And then, so by the time we got to, f the t I got to the fourth step, I said like, gee, this human resource is like right there. It's like the fourth step. I mean, you, you know, after a while you have the registration, you have this, and then it's like, the people, yeah, that's the next step, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to, you know, to be qualified to get the people to know to match up. And now even greater appreciation just for going through this little ex personal exercise, mm -hmm. you know, on 
developing businesses and projects uh, and or even messages of how important that putting you know the right body developing the right body and putting that right body in the right place right size I, I guess is what <laughs> you, know, you like saying um, if if a woman candidate for president were to come from a certain segment or of our society or a certain profession, where do you see that person coming from? Would you still come from government or a lawyer type or? It's a possibility of both. Um, and this person could come from uh, a different walk of life as well. Um, I think that more importantly, uh, the individual that we need to be most interested in um, as we go through that process in 2016 is really who has a better handle on the issues, um, who is really focused on the issues at hand, um, who's able to communicate that um, at a level in which a broad audience can understand um, what they will do once they take office. Um, I, I am so tired of um, politics that are um, not productive, um, politics that um, kind of throw stones at the other side, uh, things of that nature. I firmly believe that if we, you know, if we get to a level someday where we can do away with you know um, the Republican, the Democrat, the independent parties, and really focus on the best man or woman for the job. Um, I, I think we'd be in a much better position. You know, I know that that's uh, possibly some radical thinking, or some people would say that that would never happen. However, um, most people never thought that they would see the first African-American president in office. So I believe in change. I believe that things can change if you're focused on the right changes that need to be made, if you're honest about that, if you're having deep conversations about that, um, if you're not willing to compromise or let it go um, just because it's what we've always done. The reason why I asked about what segment of society would this woman president come from or be of what profession is that I'm thinking about the recent candidacy of, not necessarily for president, but the recent candidacy of uh, several high profile women. Mm -hmm. For one, uh, Sarah Palin, mm -hmm. who was stressing her experiences as governor of a state. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about more locally here in Connecticut, Linda McMahon, who was stressing that her corporate abilities, and quite frankly, the result for both of those individuals were far from being positive. So my thoughts are, can you just say it? Here's this hotshot female lawyer or this hotshot female corporate big wig. Uh, is that the qualifying methodology to, you know, produce a woman president? Could it be a housewife who knows her civics? A housewife who knows her oratory? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I Again, I think that um, the right individual could come from any walk of life. Um, I do believe that there does need to be um, a level of formal education. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that because of the state in which we're in from an economic standpoint, I believe that you do need to have some business savvy, um, some experience in business. Um, I also believe that yeah, I mean, it is a valuable 
um, it's a valuable discipline to be an attorney by education, an attorney by practice as well. Um, you're able to um, you're able to argue your points. You're able to get your points across when you've been trained, hopefully as an attorney. Um, so you know, I'm not saying that okay, everybody run out and get their JD. Um, however, I am saying that it's it's more of a well-rounded picture, in my opinion. Somebody who's worked in corporate, somebody who has um, led a family in their household, somebody who's a mom, somebody who's a wife, a mother, um, an aunt, a, an aunt, a cousin, whatever, um, somebody who has a broad level of experience and, and who really puts people first, um, somebody who has um, worked in, in the human resources function, I believe would be a prime candidate um, for president, for office, um, because our training is that we do put people first. People are the center and the core of what we do. And in any business meeting that I go into with any business person, no matter what the level, my role is to bring them back and to ensure that they understand what the people implications really are to the decisions that they're trying to make. If we were to continue along on the qualifications, I know that I've been quite expressed for my just <clears throat> fairly short amount of time that I've known you is how well spoken you are, how well you, you communicate. Uh, there and also lies like a <clears throat> training, shall we say, that would be needed for anyone, just oratory, to know how to speak well, to know how to speak mm -hmm. well in front of a highly pressured, highly audience mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. um, so to speak, um, a kind of like national speakers league, mm -hmm. where I know there's some organizations, some uh, uh, fraternities that have these contests and basically te teaching our children how to speak well and how to communicate. Uh, would you advocate something like a National Speakers League? Absolutely. Um, I believe firmly in um, the art of communication, um, verbal as well as written. Um, that's how you're able to express yourself. Um, you know, with without the ability to articulate yourself, to be able to communicate your thoughts, your views, your opinions, um, then you're unable to get the work done. You're unable to move any initiatives, any projects forward uh, without that ability. So I, I believe strongly in um, the art of communication. Wow. <clears throat> It just came to me that you know, the subject, and we're talking about a woman for uh, uh, president in 2016, and how she would be so qualified and all. And somehow, although you are in the majority, <laughs> on some level of terminology, women are a minority. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Um, and if the same thing applying for minorities so far as being able to hold the highest position in the land, mm -hmm. the types of training and what so it seems that like along with the development of the potential for any one minority that there has to be developing for like those minorities, those people who figure that they're out of the loop, mm -hmm. you know to have those mechanics. It's the same thing so far as uh, human resources and uh, training people for jobs and to take positions, to take corporate positions. Mm -hmm. This whole thing of bringing the minority into the loop so far as this development, mm -hmm. this recruitment development. Mm -hmm. um, is it your plan to be a part of the effort to help minorities with their looking for jobs or the training for jobs? Absolutely. Um, my role um, within Total Residuals and the role of Total Residuals is to help people um, who have been de 
displaced mm -hmm. um, with a focus on one, one of the areas that I want to focus on are single mothers uh, because I was a single mother years ago um, and I want to be able to provide a vehicle for mothers that you know are on state assistance that are on welfare kind of a welfare to work program um, so that they can um, be trained um, and they can um, earn a better living mm -hmm. um, for their families um, the economy will rise as a result of that the other thing that I have a, a true passion for is around what I call a second chance program. Um, individuals that have been um, incarcerated that um, need an opportunity to be retrained, need an opportunity to have a skill so that they can open their own businesses, so that they can be productive citizens um, within our communities, um, so that they don't have to look towards the street as an option. Um, that's something that I'm very passionate about. That is something that I really want to afford individuals who really want to turn their lives around. That was something sometimes that in a corporate environment because of the policies and the rules you know if they did have um, you know a, a misdemeanor or a felony um, they if they didn't disclose it obviously that's an integrity issue which I totally support because you need to disclose everything on the application that you're being asked um, however at times when they did disclose it, um, there was always um, another candidate that kind of rose to the top. So um, I think that um, we need to provide a forum for these people um, so that they're able to be productive citizens, um, respectable citizens, taxpayers, business owners, um, things of that nature so that they can have a better quality of life, so that their families can have a better quality of life, so that our societies and our communities will just come up from where we where we are where we've been over the past you know 10 20 50 years your approach seems to be all inclusive which is very heartwarming in that they're considering you know all type of women's minorities those who are disenfranchised mm -hmm. and to bring to them those sorts of tools be it an organization as such as yourself proper the right social network, you know, mm -hmm. someone like the Social Compact Project or LinkedIn. Um, and I really appreciate you having helped develop this whole scenario of, well, we won't say jobs, but we'll say opportunities, yes. okay, mm -hmm. in relations to the, uh, the big opportunity of, uh, being a president, so I, I, perhaps the whole concept of how encouraging it would have, it was to have a Barack Obama for president and inspiring for the youth and inspiring for the poor than uh, what you're doing, mm -hmm. properly applied. This human resource effort uh, also can be up encouraging and uplifting. You know, I thank you for helping being a part of the uplifting uh, of our society. And we can close with your making any sort of human resources appeal <laughs> that you'd like to the audience. Um, I, I'd like to say that um, human resources is a very valuable function. It's a function that's much needed within any organization. Um, without the people, you can't get anything done, you can't have the productivity, you can't make the sales, um, you can't get the return on investment. Um, so value your people. That's what I want to say. Treat people like you would want to be treated. Right to that camera there. Value your people. Value your people. Value your people, so says our special guest today, Sharon Baldwin. And we thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Welcome.